Welcome to Something More. I'm Emily Plowman, and we are so excited to have you with us today. And my guest says that God often imparts prophetic messages in the numbers contained throughout the Bible. And it occurs more often than we think. Joining me in the studio to tell us how is founder and senior pastor of Open Door Church, Troy Brewer. Welcome, Troy. Hello, Emily. Thank you so much. It is such a pleasure having you today. And I am very excited about today's topic because I know it is a passion of yours um, and it is a passion that I'm starting to discover and I think that the body of Christ um, needs to rediscover and that is biblical numerology. Right on, you know, just at the very at the very beginning when whenever we announced it, people were like, well, what kind of weirdness is that? Right. right? Why would you even it's a very do that? Big word. You know, here's what's real is it's just it's just simply the understanding that God uses weights, measures, numbers, and order to glorify himself and to really present his glory to us. It's one of the ways that God speaks to us in an incredible way. We know that Psalms 29 says, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the voice of the Lord is upon the many waters, right? So there's no end to the voices of God. Now there's only one word of God, but there is no end to the voices of God. And whenever you're hearing God speak, okay, from a preacher, from a book I'm reading, from my kids, and they're all seeing the same thing, that is defined as the sound of many rushing waters, mm -hmm. right? And you know that. Yes. You know that voice like, Dadgummit, I cannot get away from this. Well, once you start hearing God speak through numbers, oh my. Once you turn it on, you cannot turn it off. You start hearing God speak through the license plates in front of you. You'll be, you'll be at Kroger and go, what the, look, God's talking to me uh, through everything around you. And you really start to learn how to acknowledge him in all your ways. And then he directs your steps. It's just awesome. So you've opened a floodgate then when you ask for the Lord yeah, to yeah, you're gonna open be in bad this trouble. to you. So you've made a comment in the past that God is a mathematician. He is. What do you mean by that? Um, I want to just tell you that I met a guy from Russia, this 50 pound head, this guy that was so brilliant, right? And I don't even begin to fit in that category. And he was a physicist. And I asked him, how did you find Jesus in Russia? And he said, through math. I, I began to study math and I began to see the order. And he said, I saw the beauty of God and I knew that God had created this. And I began to search him out and I found out that Jesus was God. And that blew my mind. Like you, okay, are you talking about math was the evangelist that showed you Jesus? Yes, because, because it's actually in the image of the Lord. He loves to multiply. He loves to divide. He loves to add. He loves to subtract and he loves to count things. You know, whenever you read the book of Revelation, it's just all about counting everything. Everything is counted. Emily, you know, even the, the number of the hair on your head is counted and it all glorifies the Lord, right? And so how it glorifies the Lord, is God says, look at this great number. And then when you look at the number, if you understand what the numbers actually mean, meaning that the numbers are also prophetic words. Mm. Once you do that, you begin to read these sentences that are sentences because of the sequence. And we know that the Bible is written prophetically in such a way that not only are the words prophetic, but the way that the words are written are also prophetic, right? So what do you mean by that? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Because I think that's a concept that maybe it has never occurred mm -hmm. to us. It's certainly not really taught in the body of Christ. Okay, so Jesus, Jesus puts this this way. He says, he says, whenever you see the fulfillment of the prophecy of the Bible, not one jot or tittle will not be fulfilled. What is that? The dotting of an I and the crossing of a T. Not just the words, but the way the words are actually written are also prophetic. So then when you begin to study things, you begin to look at, okay, like Ecclesiastes chapter three, it gives, you know, there's a time and season for everything, right? Yes. You know, to everything, turn, 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 right? right? Okay, so there it is. But if you count those, there's 28 of those. So 28 is a number that means times and seasons. Wow. And then once you see it all the way through the Bible, every time that there's anything written 28 times, it has to do with times and seasons. Even the word times is in the Bible 28 times. Even the word weeks is in the Bible 28 times. You know, there's, there is the word courage is in the Bible 28 times, that you and I are supposed to have courage in every single time and season in life. Okay, I, when I was looking all this up, I again, I count everything, because I'm like, there you are, King Jesus. I see you, man. The word cross is in the Bible, Emily, exactly 28 times, and that means He has guaranteed us incredible supernatural victory, no matter the time, 
no matter the season. Mm. So if I'm looking at something, I'm also going to count those things. And we know that all of our Jewish brothers and sisters do that, going all the way back throughout the ages. They're counting things like, you know, how many times does God say the word good within the Genesis story? Or as the book of Matthew starts off and as the book of Luke starts off, how many generations are there from Adam unto Jesus? Or in one book, how many generations? There's 14 generations from, Ab from Abraham to, the to David. David, 14 generations from David to the carrying away of Babylon, and 14 generations from the carrying away of Babylon unto Jesus. So the book starts off with 14, 14, 14. Well, if the Lord doesn't want us to pay attention to the number, why would He bring that repetition? Right. Because the number 14 means generational promises. It means I will keep my promises throughout the generations. And He points it out, boom, I did it, and this is how. That is amazing. And it really shows another facet of God, doesn't yes. it? That He is very detail oriented and ah. that nothing is insignificant. Yes. And so, what does that mean for our lives then? If we have all of these numbers swirling around that God is speaking through and we encounter them, what power do they have in our lives? That's a great question. I'd like to just answer that by saying that. Numbers have no power whatsoever, and we can never give num we can never give powers to numbers. Never. So if you're somebody that lives at 1313 Mockingbird Lane, you know you can still be a drop dead, sold out Jesus freak, and you can't say, "Man, I can't glorify God here because the numbers are bad." That's ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. Or you come across 666 one day, or you yes. were born on Friday like, the 13th. Oh no, something bad's going to happen. No. no. You know what the Bible says in Romans? It says in Romans chapter one, it says. It says, it, says, it says, the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world, even His eternal power and Godhead, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Okay? In other words, we can clearly see the invisible things of God through the things that are going on around us, right? But then the next part of it says, but when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were they thankful, but they became vain in their imaginations, and professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, so they're just without excuse. Like, what is that? The deal is, once you start to see this, if you're not going to glorify God with that, you will begin to imagine worthless things. And you will, those things will become dominant over your life. Can't be friends with somebody because the numbers don't add up. That's ridiculous. You can't, you can't do something because you're, you're scared of the numbers. No, numbers have no power whatsoever. Jesus said, all authority and power is given unto me. So when I see this, the point is to see the heart of Jesus in it. Yes, and Jesus is king, he regardless is king. of how he's speaking. Yes, and when we come back, we are going to look at some of Troy's favorite numbers and what they mean for us today. Well, welcome back. And so, Troy, we are on this journey of numbers. Yes. And whether it's a new journey for some of us or an old journey, either way, it's alive, it's active, God is always speaking. What are some of the ways that you have discerned the Lord speaking through some of our common numbers today? Well, one of the ways that you know that God is speaking to you is the Bible says that every word is established by the mouth of two or three witnesses, right? We know that Jesus is in the midst of two or three, right, that are gathered together. Yes. And by the way, the number two is a number that represents a faithful witness. So Jesus sends out the disciples two by two. There are two witnesses in the book of Revelation. And so on the second day of creation, God divides things. And so there's always somebody that is separate to be a witness to the other. Right? Which God kind of does that as well. He you does. Know, you've got the Father and the Son, yeah, so although you also you have it. the Holy Spirit. But so that's, that's okay. a three. But that, that is. So it's the two or three, right? Yes. You can't know the three unless you know the two. So that's something that God does all the time. Well, one of the things that God will do is He'll start speaking to you in this amazing repetition. And you keep hearing it and you can't get away from it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that'll be in the form of a number. And that is alarming to some people. Why am I seeing this number all the time? I get so many letters from people all over the world, Emily, saying, what is 222? I keep seeing 22, or I keep seeing the number 222, or number 2222, or what's 111? I can't get away from 111. What are those things? And you know, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2, it says, It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out the matter. And I think that any time that we're aware, okay, no, this is not just my humanity. This is the Lord moving within my humanity. I don't understand it. You have to search it out. Mm -hmm. 
And so I have found, you know, that in searching out like the number one, I begin to look at, well, you know, one represents unity, one represents oneness or unity, right? All the way through the Bible. And once God does that once, He does it all the way through the Bible. Mm. Two means a faithful witness. Three is one of my favorite numbers. It means perfect completion. Or I'm from Texas, so I like to say the whole enchilada. Oh, yeah. Right? It's all the way. It's outer court, inner court, most holy places, nice. past, present, future, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. It's, it's Saul. David and it's Solomon, right? It is Egypt, the wilderness, and the promised land. It's the whole nine yards. If you want to see it in fullness, God likes to stamp the number three on it. And okay? we see that in our lives too, right? The we Lord do. working in threes, yes, different ma'am, phases of our lives. We do. I think you mentioned it. It's like you have the wilderness and the promised land and yes. the Egypt that you came out of. Yes, ma'am. That's it's fascinating. Like, it is fascinating. And, and He does this to help you get, in, to help you get on the right track. The point of the order of the Lord is not just a, a rigid regimen of rules and, and complicated analysis of things. It is literally, hey, you need to get back on track. Yeah. It's all about relationship. Everything in the kingdom is relational before it's functional. So we have just rolled into a new year, you know, mm-hmm. 2021, 2020 was quite a year. Yes. Uh, lots of unexpected things that yes. happened. And now we're in a new year. Is the Lord speaking anything to you through the numbers 2021? Absolutely. He most certainly is. Um, you know, there's two calendars involved in this. And one is the Hebrew calendar, right? Which is a lunar calendar. And that begins on Rosh Hashanah. And the new year begins on Rosh Hashanah, the blowing of the trumpets. Which we had in September. We had that in, in September. And on the Hebrew calendar, it's 5781. Okay, on the Gregorian calendar, which is a which is a solar calendar and is a solar calendar and is also linear. So when you and I tend to think of how to measure things in our Western mindset, we tend to think of lines. So our calendars are lines, but in a Hebrew mindset, they tend to think in circles. Times and seasons. Times and seasons. Times is a line and seasons is a circle. You got it. Right I on. love this. This okay. is you know such a fascinating Me too. revelation. I love it too. So on the Gregorian calendar, it's the year 2021. So the emphasis, first of all, is on 20. And we moved into this new decade of the 20s. Just like in the Hebrew, we just moved into the new decade of the 80s. At the same exact time, on the Gregorian calendar, we move into this new decade of the 20s. And 20 is a number that means expectancy. It has to do with when your faith is fulfilled. It's like I always knew it was going to happen, and then boom, it finally happens. Nice. Okay, it finally happens, right? So for 20 years, so and so waited for so and so. For 20 years, the Ark of the Covenant sat here. 20, and then on the 20th year, it finally happened. And expectancy, Emily, is a lot like currency to prophetic people. It's like, nope, I believe in the goodness of God. I don't care that the world is losing his mind. God hasn't lost his mind. The Spirit of the Lord is real. You watch, I don't know what God's going to do, but it's going to be good. I'm full of expectancy, not, not expectation of these are the hoops that God has to jump through, but I'm just expecting to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Yes, and all those promises that yes. he's given us or what we've been pressing in for in prayer. Yes. Would this be the time to start expecting those things? It is. Is that right? And not only is it a year of it, but it's an entire decade of it that has the theme of that, right? So we know in 2020, God gives everybody this word all over the world. Okay, this is going to be amazing. Boom, 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 boom. And then all hell breaks loose all (laughs) over the planet. Sometimes literally. Yes. Yes. Yeah, literally. I mean, literally. And, And it's amazing because in the Hebrew calendar, it's the year of the pay. It's the year of the mouth. It's the decade of your mouth needs to be seen and heard, and boom, the world, the whole world says you have to cover your mouth. Never happened before in the history of the earth. Um, in a year where we're supposed to be experiencing the breath of God, we hear this term, I can't breathe, all over the world, right? Wow. And it comes in direct opposition of what God has said. And so in the 20s, In the 20s, we're supposed to be expecting, we're supposed to be, oh my gosh, something amazing is going to happen. And the worst news that can possibly happen throughout the world, a a literally a firestorm of hopelessness has come against the world. And this is why we as prophetic people need to live according to a different spirit than what the world is, that we we need to have a different word than what the world has. 21 is the big triple seven. 7, okay. 14, 21. Uh, come on, sister. <laughs> come on. You know what you're talking about. So when I look at 21 and I'm looking at seven times three, right on, I'm seeing the spirit of the living God being made manifest. 
okay, nice. in fullness, completion. That greater glory. A greater glory. It is a year of greater glory. It is also a year of breaking curses. It is a year of the presence of the Lord showing up in an incredible way and us being overwhelmed by His presence instead of being overwhelmed by the things of the world. Come on. Yeah. So there, well, that's so much hope there. there it it might have started off rocky, but there are good things to come. Oh, there are good things to come. And there's more to come with something more, too, because when we come back, we're going to look at how we can just start discerning what the Lord is speaking to us in numbers for ourselves. Well, welcome back. And Troy, I have to ask, do you have to be good at math in order to have this conversation with the Lord through numbers, or is this for everybody? I'm so glad you asked that, because people think all over the world that I'm this big time mathematician guy. I am just a Jesus freak. I love the Lord. I am, you know, I, I am not highly educated in math or any of those things. No, anybody can, because nobody can escape numbers, weights, and measures. Mm -hmm. and. You know, all those things are supposed to glorify the Lord, and all you have to do is pay attention. All you have to do is ask the Lord to show me. Do you know that there's actually, in Daniel chapter 8, there is actually an angel who is named in the Bible in Daniel chapter 8, somewhere around verse 15, and his name is Palmoni or Palmoni, right? Like, well, what is that? It means the wonderful numberer of secrets. Oh, really? Yeah, and his job wow. is just to count stuff and to glorify the Lord and go, ta-da! He's right there. He's right there. And it's like, okay, the, the wonderful number of secrets, really? Why would you do that? Because all those things glorify the Lord. And so you can ask the Lord to show you. You can, just like you can ask God, God, open up the scriptures to me. Just like you can ask God, God, when I hear this preacher preach, I want you, Lord, to speak to me. You're going to see numbers throughout the day. And again, once you see it, Emily, you can't Can't unsee turn it, it off. No. You cannot turn it off. You, it, you, you will start going, oh my gosh, and the Lord will be saying yes. And when you know how to line up with Him, when you know how to glorify Him in that, you literally get in alignment for your assignment. And you get in the right place at the right time for the right miracle to happen. Perfect timing. Talk a little bit more about that, because how do numbers really help you align with your assignment? Uh, I can't get away from 111 is one of the, I, I, okay, if the Lord wakes me up at 111, I have a whole list of scriptures that I claim at, that are 111 scriptures, mm -hmm. right? Or w there's something else too that happens, um, 818, like uh, Deuteronomy 818 is the power to gain wealth, right? Okay, I see 818 every single day. And I know that eight means new beginnings, and I know that 18 is a number that represents life and life more abundantly, right? Yes. So the Hebrew word for life is lakayam, to life, to life, lakayam, right? But you gotta go whenever you do that. And I can't <laughs> so back that. in the throat. Yeah, exactly right. right. So, so 18 means life, or 818. So that we have a host of 818 scriptures. This is one of the easiest ways to do this. Um, you can also, one of the things that, that uh, we do all the way through the scriptures is we literally count things. Like the, the number that represents the love of God is 16. It's like sweet 16, right? And there happens to be 16 Jehovah titles, right? And whenever it says love is kind, love it, there's 16 of those, right? And you begin to find that pattern all the way through the Bible. And so if you're like, man, I don't know what, I keep seeing this crazy number and I don't, I don't know what that is. Like, I, I've never seen this before. This is ridiculous. What is this? Look it up. Go to, go to any Bible place that is on the web mm -hmm. and look it up and type it up and do your research and find out what the Word of God says concerning that. What is that pattern all the way through the Word of God and watch how it speaks to you. And ultimately we have the Holy Spirit. We right? do have and the Holy Spirit. You mentioned earlier in the, uh, our discussion about it's the relationship. It is. Right? It is. And so for people who have a heart to encounter the Lord in any way that He is speaking, yes. how practically? So you talked about, we look for patterns, mm. what else? How do we open up that floodgate? You, can, you can't open it up. You can literally pray and ask the Lord, God, will you please give me this language? Give me the gift of this language. And, and again, you better get ready because the Lord will be like, okay. He'll be like, okay, and you will. And we see this all the time. We pray for people all the time. We're like, okay, I've never seen this. And then they'll come back a week later or a month later and they'll just be shaking their head. Like, I don't know, this was going on around me all the time. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that this was going on. It is going on around you all the time. But again, it is, 
It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out the matter. And this, Emily, this is what separates mere curiosity seekers from true seekers, is that you're willing to just keep searching it out. I want to just see how deep I can go in the Lord in this thing. And so it's an invitation. I want to, I want to say one more time, there's no power in numbers whatsoever, and it's absolutely ridiculous for us to give any power to numbers. However, with that said, once we give power to God in everything, He might manifest in numbers. Like the number in the Bible that represents heroes rising up, uh, great exploits of faith is a number 11, okay? Now check this out. There are like Hebrews chapter 11, right? Hebrews chapter yes, 11. Yes, the heroes of the faith. You got it, right? So uh, Veterans Day in the United States is 11-11. The first time man stepped on the moon, it was Apollo 11. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Okay, it means exploits, the thing that nobody else can do, and they do it. Well, that's biblical, and it's also in history because the author of history and the Bible is the same person. And that's so redeeming for something like the number 11, which yes. because of certain events that have happened in our country, yes. we associate with trauma and terror yes. and even judgment. Yes, ma'am. And, and and it does mean those things, but that's the non-redeemed version of it. Yeah, so every number has Yeah, that's versions. exactly right. There's a redeemed and there's a non-redeemed version. Okay, there is. So, so yeah, 11 in, in a non-redeemed version means disorder. So it's like 10 means perfect order, but 11 is what happens when you add to it, or 12 represents perfect government, and it's what happens when there's supposed to be 12, but now there's only 11. Oh, wow. Right? So no, there's a non-redeemed version of all these things. So there's a lot of nuance to all of this, which yes. is why we could spend a lifetime yes, ma'am. growing in relationship with the Lord and yes. searching it out. Yes, ma'am. Well, Troy, thank you. This has opened up so many possibilities for continuing to press in with the Lord, and we appreciate you sharing. Thank you so much, today. Emily. And if you are feeling a pull in this direction, do what Troy is suggesting. Talk to the Lord about it. Ask Him to open up these floodgates. It's ultimately about the love relationship that we have with Him. And this is just one additional way that the Lord invites us on this journey of love and faith with Him. So thank you for joining us. I'm Emily Plowman, and we will see you next time on Something More. Call now and get Troy Brewer's powerful brand new book, Redeeming Your Timeline. You will also receive his two-part DVD set, Supernatural Keys to Redeeming Your Timeline, and his exclusive audio CD teaching, Five Gifts from Jesus, plus this bonus declaration card, Redeeming Your Timeline. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9718. Through Troy Brewer's powerful brand new book, you will learn how you can invite Jesus into your personal timeline to supernaturally redeem your past and miraculously prepare your future. The book includes prayers and exercises to help you redeem your times of loss into gain, failure into success, and more. You will also receive his two-part DVD set, Supernatural Keys to Redeeming Your Timeline. You will get to know Jesus as the creator of time, space, and matter. Change your present, future, and the destiny of your generation. Gain supernatural skill sets for healing healing past wounds, calming future anxieties, and discovering rest in the now. Plus, you will receive Troy Brewer's audio CD teaching, Five Gifts from Jesus. Troy provides a vivid account of his 93-minute encounter with Jesus, the specific five gifts he received, including their purpose and application. Troy prays for an impartation of these gifts and walks you through specific prayers to receive each one of them. Plus, you will receive this bonus declaration card. This handy card includes powerful prayers, declarations, and scriptures for redeeming your time. Don't miss out on getting Troy Brewer's powerful brand new book, Redeeming Your Timeline. You will also receive his two-part DVD set, Supernatural Keys to Redeeming Your Timeline, and his exclusive audio CD teaching, Five Gifts from Jesus, plus this bonus declaration card, Redeeming Your Timeline. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9718. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9718 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.